What's poppin', T-Subs and T-Squad? So, <clears throat> Lord, I'm about to knock these good videos up out of the way, y'all. Y'all hoes got me up early, as L. Teddy would say. Shout out to L. Teddy. Early in the damn morning getting y'all these videos. Hold on, girl. Listen, y'all, nobody really calls me like that throughout the day. I normally text. But whenever I get here to talk to y'all, now everybody and they mammy got something that they want to call and talk to me about. Y'all hoes know I'm working. Leave me alone. Anyway, y'all, I'm fixing my light. Um, so I'm here first thing up <coughs> um, for the videos that I got for y'all today. Girl, <laughs> Miss Love and Marriage Huntsville, child, listen. For those of y'all that don't know what's going on, um, this is basically a mid-season type of thing. This is finishing off season two. So we're still in season two of Love and Marriage Huntsville, um, which is why it's episode 11, and it's called A Whole Lot of Drama. Listen, I mean no harm or no disrespect to anybody um, whose families um, have gone through the whole Black Lives Matter movement. You know what I mean? So this is no disrespect to Trayvon Martin or, you know, um, um, the Jordan family or George Floyd family or Breonna Taylor. This has nothing to do with y'all at all, point blank, period. Um, but with that having been said, I'm getting sick and tired of the premise. Like, I get it. I totally understand it. But it seems like... Every new black syndicated reality show that's on, <clears throat> excuse me, the first thing that they want to do is drag us down with what's going on in the world and about C-19. We get it, y'all. Like, y'all done beat us over the head with this shit from uh, growing up hip hop to, to, to all of these other damn shows that, that came on. I, I get it. Now, what I can appreciate is that y'all did it you know, make it a whole 10 minutes. I mean, you know, you gave us a little yang, yang, yang around the house. And I was all here for that. Thank y'all for that. But I'm just over that, y'all. I'm over it. All right? I'm more than sure we finna get it with basketball wise. I'm more than sure we finna get it when Love and Hip Hop come back on. And I'm just tired of it. Damn, it's a trying time for everybody. We know it. <sighs> now that I got that off my chest. Melody has been standing in Atlanta with her brother Marcus to get some clarity. Uh, Melody files for her divorce. Good. It's about damn time. She talks about um, the straw was when during the middle of the pandemic while everything was shutting down. He was leaving for hours at a time. And she doesn't want the kids to go through this. She says that she's ready to go back to Huntsville and have Martel leave the house. And then Marcus offers his help to help her move Martel's stuff up out of the house. And I said, thank God of that. Because I'm I, like, listen, y'all, I wonder how close Mel and her brother Marcus are really. Because let me tell y'all something. Had that been my brother, my brother would have been on his ass like way back in season one at the end of this thing when you were sitting up here and you first was telling me about Ariane Curry. My brother would have been in that ass then. So I, I am glad that you are starting to show us that you a big brother. It's time for you to do what big brothers are supposed to do. Step up. Um, a Ramadan dam. Uh, and Mel, you know where the hell that man was going. He was going to Ariane house. All right? You already had your time with him. Now he was going to go spend his time with the side peas. You know where he was at, girl. And we know where he was at. So you could just go on ahead and keep it real with us. You ain't got a lot of us, sis. We on your side. So you could be honest. Anywho, um, so Martel's at home with the kids while Mel is going to Atlanta. And his mama, uh, Merlene, Merlene comes through. Um, and then he, they talk about Mel being in Atlanta and how he has the kids while she's gone. As it should be, nigga. You they damn daddy. You ain't mind fucking to get them here. So now don't try to dry complain about having to have them. I mean, ain't you supposed ain't you supposed to be getting wanted wanting to get them full time anyway? I mean, this ain't really helping your case. 
Uh, which is what this is coming from. Anywho, I live for Merlene. Because what most women with sons do that I absolutely hate, that I'm glad that my mama did not do with me or my brother, which is they gonna stand up for their son and they fuck shit and they and they bum foolery and they time foolery and they shenanigans. She already sees Martel for her for his works. And what a lot of these men got to understand is, yeah, I'm your mama, but I was a woman before anything. I was a woman before I became a wife, and I was a woman before I became a mama. And I've been in Melody's shoes. I've been where Melody's been. I, I, I've been there. I've been, I, I've been there, and I've done that, and I promise never to get hurt again. Never again. Yes, come on through. That's off the Mary album. All right? That's off the Growing Pains album. You need to listen to it. I'm all here for Merlene letting Martel know, listen, I don't care what the excuse is. Because it seems like Martel's whole thing is, well, she wasn't doing this, she wasn't doing that, and she also was doing stuff too. Like throwing out little seeds that aren't backed up by any facts. You have all of these facts and proofs and texts and pictures and emails and so on and so forth. Where is it? See, one thing I can say about Mel, when she got receipts, she got receipts. Bitch, you got a whole baby. That right there is a huge receipt. And I'm so glad that Merlene was like, bro, you just like your daddy. Get out of here. She told him straight up, Melody could have been doing every damn thing right in the marriage and you still would have ran out there and cheated because you just like your daddy. It is what it is. Shout out to you, Merlene. Um, and, and thank you for not riding blindly for your son. I wish a lot of mamas would stop doing that stupid ass shit. I done sat here and got upset. Hold on. Because I done been through it. I done been through it. I been through it with a dude that was treating me so damn horribly. And then the mama coming off at me as if I'm the person that's in the wrong. Because all off the guys of that's her son. And she going to ride for her son. Even though she know her son is wrong as two left shoes. She's still going to ride for her son. Girl, bad. Anywho. Let me calm down. Girl, that really just pissed me off. <sighs> so Letitia's at home with her kids. Um, and she's homeschooling them. While being in school by herself. So Marceau comes in and Marceau does what he always does. And that's be a misogynistic asshole. Basically telling her that she can do it. Like as if his job is, is, is so busy right now. Which I'm more than sure that it's not. Because every time we see y'all doing anything. It's only with this little lounge or cigar thing. Or whatever the hell it is. That y'all supposed to be having going on. Like I, I you know. Men kill me. Because at the end of the day. While I understand the whole wife role. Husband role, 1950 way of thinking. I mean, I guess, I, I, I suppose. But at the end of the day, you helped create these kids as well. She couldn't have gotten pregnant without you. So why should all of this responsibility be all on her when you're there? Because I'm telling you, Marceau, you can't be doing that much at, at this present time. You can't be. So you mean to tell me, you can't sit down with your kids while they do the virtual thing and let Letitia use that time to get her schoolwork done. So then Letitia has time to go on ahead, clean the house, have dinner ready. The kids are straight. You make sure they got their homework done. Like that's all she's asking you to do. Like I just didn't like how he came in there and tried to make it seem like she was overreacting. She can handle it because he's way too busy. He got stuff to do. Like you didn't mind it when she was being your little lap dog all around the goddamn office following behind you. I mean, I guess. Um, Letitia joking about hiring a manny girl. Don't joke. Do it. And hire the finest one that you can find. And let Marceau piss you off purposely so you can have a reason to hudge on him. Because uh, it ain't like Marceau ain't doing the same thing. But then again, don't do that. Because then you're going to be all type of trifling hoes and you floozies. And how could you do that in my house? In the bed where we lay and all the rest of that stuff. I mean, girl, if you do do it, go to his house. Moving on. Um, so then they talk about the Holtz divorcing. And Marceau thinks that other people are responsible for Melody deciding to get a divorce. 
in a in a small way, I understood where Marceau was coming from. But at the end of the day, like, is it safe to say that Melody has finally had enough? And when enough is enough, is enough, is enough. I won't go back. I won't go back no more now. Like, I mean, can we give Melody a little bit of leeway here? Don't get me wrong. I understood what Marceau was saying. I do. But I'm also open enough to be like, yo, this woman is really hurt. So th this is the straw that would break the camel back. The nigga had a whole nother baby. A whole nother child. He got a whole nother family somewhere else. She not trying to be on no Rashida, on some Rashida shit. And I'm not mad with Mel for that. Moving on. Um, so I see y'all still, first of all, Lord, why did I fail to mention this, y'all? At the very beginning of this damn episode, I see y'all still trying to force Destiny and LeBaric on us. But, Destiny, I'm going to let you live because I lived for you and we about to get to why in a second. <laughs> At the beginning of this thing, um, Maurice was doing like a little town, little meaning thing or whatever the case may be with other little business, uh, black owned business owners or whatever the case may be. <laughs> But the only thing that I remember from that was A, seeing Destiny. And two, <laughs> and two, girl, I can't get it out. And two, and two, we see a, we see a dark ass sitting there looking like, girl, why every time I see Sadar, Sadar look like he needs to be sitting in the corner with a dunce cap on his head. Like every time I see him, he just... <laughs> anyway, uh, anywho's it. Destiny finally had her baby. I think she had a son. Congratulations, Destiny. Um, and they moved into their new house. <clears throat> Congratulations again, Destiny, for your new square feet. Now, Destiny, if this your house, if this your house, if this your house, I'm going to really need for you to have some furniture in that motherfucker. Like, you got all of these square feet. The only thing I see is a cute couch and a rug. I think you had a rug now. I mean, I ain't see no pictures, no plants, no drapers. Um... <laughs> I <laughs> I see no dishes, no cups, no plates, ain't no TV in there. Like, <laughs> so Martel comes over, um, and he talks to Destiny about the divorce. And how he can't take the verbal abuse anymore. And how her heart isn't in it anymore. He also tells her to make sure that she has his back because she knew him first. And insinuates that she cheated first. And that's why he ran out and did what he did. And Destiny stood up for Melody. And see, this is why Destiny, I didn't give I'm not giving you nothing at all this episode. Because I I, I went up for you. What you did that I liked was that you saw through Martel and you saw Martel for his works. Even though you knew Martel first, you still put yourself in her shoes as a woman. You understand me? Because I see what Martel is doing here. Because later on in this thing, we see Martel goes and gives this dry ass, ungenuine apology to uh to, to the Scots. Martel is pulling the classic Nene leaking thing, which is. Let me go around and give empty ass apologies. Let me shake hands, kiss babies so that I can pull people on my side so that I can get them to at least agree with me with everything that I have to say about Melody. Whether, uh, uh, yeah, about Melody. Whether it's a lie or not. That's what Martell is doing. And that's why I don't see it for that big ear bastard. I don't see it for him at all. Point B Martell is the type of man that you... Martell, the type of nigga that you will find somewhere laying in the ditch, somewhere stanking, fucking with a bitch like me. Because, like, the, the tip that Martell is on, I'm not here for it, bro. Like, I, I'm not here for it at all. And I'm really glad that Melody stood up and said, nah, what you not gonna do is come here and try to box me into a corner 
of I knew you longer, so you need to have my back. Stand up with me in my wrongness. I hate that. So because I know you, I can't have a mind of my own. Because we down like that. I can't think for myself. Now, don't get me wrong. If Destiny wanted to stand up for Martell because she really believed what's going on, I would still respect that. But I respect Destiny even more for saying, no, bruh. Yeah, me and you are cool, but at the end of the day, I, I'm, not about, I'm not about to... Nah, no, no. I, I, I would say it for Destiny with that. I was. Martell, you full of shit, and you a bitch for that. I keep telling you, you a muscle-bound bitch for no reason. <sighs> And if you're mad at me for calling you a bitch, stop moving like a damn bitch. That shit bitches do. So here again, Martel pulling up on the Scots now. And he wants to make things right between them and so they can talk. And he blames Mel for everything that went down as to why their friendship disintegrated the way that it did. He blamed Mel for all of that, said that Mel brought him back, uh, what did he say? Mel brought him back misleading information. And that's why the fallout between him and the Scots happened. And I'm really glad they got his ass together too. Because Atisha was like, wait a minute. That doesn't account for the fact of you saying disparaging things about us and our, and our, and our marriage. The shit that you said, it caused problems in our household. What you said had my son questioning me and my husband about infidelity and 20 other women. So, you know, and, and, and I, I was with Marceau. Marceau was like, we've been through this before. We've been through this before with him. And he says, listen, an apology, apologies are just words. At this point, you need to prove to us that you're sorry. This was messed up. You were wrong. And let it be something genuine. But don't worry about it, y'all. It ain't. And y'all will be foolish to accept this non genuine ass apology. So Melanie comes back to Huntsville and she goes to see Miss Destiny. Destiny talks about how she does most of the work with the baby. That seems to be a reverberant thing in, in Mississippi, apparently. He do, I guess so, Destiny. I'm just going to move on. Uh, Melody talks about Martell and the divorce. They went down their whole little spill. And what I also respect about Destiny is Destiny didn't be so quick to let her know the real deal T about what her and Martell talked about. I get why she didn't do it. If I was Destiny, I probably wouldn't have done it either. Especially with how this last scene played out. So then Mel decides to go back home. And then they talk about the kids living situation and Martell feels like the kids need to stay in the house where they're at now, and then she stay for two weeks, and then he can uh, come and stay for two weeks, and then she could go and stay in the house that he was at, all so that the kids don't have to be in two places at once. They can stay in the same house. My whole thing is, one, that's the stupidest shit I ever heard, and two, Martell, if you was really that concerned about your children growing up in the same house, then you should have kept your dick in your pants. It's just as simple as that. If you wanted your, your kids to know what a two-family parent household is like, you should have kept your dick in your pants. I'm sorry. I just don't believe Mel cheated on you. I don't. I don't. I, 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 part of me would love to believe it, but I just don't. I don't believe Mel did anything to... I, I, I don't. I'm sorry. I just don't. That's why you don't have no proof of it. But she damn sure got proof of the shit that you got going on. And then the nerve of you to try to bait her and trying to say like, you know, she has an attitude. Oh, I don't like how you talking to me. Lower down your voice. All in an attempt of letting her know that you're trying to seek full custody. And you don't want your kids around this type of negativity. Then if you don't want your kids around negativity, then you need to give full custody to your wife, ex-wife. Because everything that you are, Martell, and everything that you're about, it is all based on negativity. And the fact that you's a fuckboy. Y'all, that's all I got. I ain't got no more to gig. Y'all drop down in the comments. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about last night's episode. It was good. 
I can see this season they're really going to give us something. Any two times you see Prim and Proper, Miss AKA Melody, throwing everything plus the kitchen sink down to her slimy, dirty, disgusting ass uh, whore bag of an ex-husband, you know we really about to get something good and I'm about to be all here for it. I'm gone. Y'all be good. Y'all be blessed. And until the next episode, I'm going to holler at y'all later. Bye. She giving, that's how we live it. Don't be mad at the system. It's simply how we've existed. I hear a lot of people talking like they politicians and choose to be an accountant because it's safe in a